2024 is about connectivity. So what can you do to prepare? Well, get grounded. The more grounded you are, the higher you can connect. We are all incredibly intuitive and able to use our skills if we pay attention to them. Well, hi there. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for coming back. This is the first time you're here. I'm Vicki. Nice to meet you. I appreciate you coming by, showing up, bringing your beautiful energy and having a conversation. Because even if you're watching this post, obviously, after I've recorded, unless you're here in the room with me, you're, you're welcome to, if you'd like to, that would be a lot more fun than me standing here talking to myself while imagining that you're here. Yeah, let's leave that alone. I appreciate you being here. So I feel your energy and your presence, not in a weird way, but in a, an appreciative way uh, when I record these. And I am grateful that you are here for this particular episode because for over 20 years now, I have done the energy of the year coming up. And I used to do energy alerts every month. And I found people were using them rather than supportive and kind of like your, your horoscope or something, right? Like informative and helpful. They were using it to blame their life on. And I'm like, no way am I going to be part of that. So I had to wait until energy evolved a little bit more. And people realized that this information is meant to be beneficial. And hopefully it is. But also as a kind of like the forecast in the weather, right? This is the energy and the way I see it and what it feels like it will be from my maps and the intuitive energy I'm getting and, and reading that and the years of being able to do that. But there, it's also likely to shift a little bit um, because of all of the involvement we have as humans and all the other sentient beings on this planet. So. Intu intuition is never solid, tangible until after the fact. And that's where you learn to depend on it. And that's where you learn to access it and have it available to you. But also from the perspective of this is just bringing me information and more information that I have in order to make great decisions. It's after the fact when you begin to say, oh, well, that happened, and then that happened, and then that happened, and oh, I have a track record. So for the last 20-something years, I've been doing these. So what ended up happening was I made it a once-a-year event in the month of December of what I feel the next year is going to be about. And can I just say that I am so blown away, um, honored, and a little... Uh, mixed, I guess, by the people who eat the information and then check in with me later or remember what I've said. I don't go back and listen to these things. I tend to want to be so in the moment and in where I am now that it's not, I'm not impacted. And this one, your thing does not want to stay in. So I'm not impacted by preconceived notions. So when I do these energy reports, it's a direct download I make very generic notes and then I bring it to you as it came to me. So let's get started, okay? And this is a general for the whole year. I'm not going to go month to month. Everybody has the capability of creating their own happy and creating their own life. And we all have the power to do that. And then we contribute to the greater whole. And then that creates and, and creates a ripple effect of. I hope high vibrations and joy, but the other type of energy works as well. So I'm doing the whole year. And just as a small recap, 2023, what I had, one of the things I talked about were the so many lives lost. I was actually okay getting to October, November and not seeing that come to fruition. I want to be wrong about those things all the time. I do. Because... The sacrificing of people's lives, even though I, I believe in the soul's process, is still very difficult for me to wrap 
my empathic heart around, especially children and babies, and especially those who are just trying to live their lives as wonderful beings in their own countries and their own families and everything. And but for a few that review refuse to evolve, we end up in these situations for now. So there are and there continue to be a lot of lives lost through natural disaster and through the wars and the increasing discord that some humans are having with evolving. They just don't want to evolve. It, it, it's like, I call them knuckle draggers because it's very Neanderthal behavior that's still going on there. And yes, we all have this aspect of ourselves, but it, it's in developing a consciousness that you move through that, past that, above it, raise the frequency. So there's a lot of unbelievably dumb stuff that's happening. So if you feel like in this last year, you've questioned your own sanity, may I say, I'm sorry, but also congratulations, because that means you are actually tapping into the possibility of raising vibration and the, actually the need we have to raise vibration. So 23, as I'm recording this in November, late November, it's still going to be extremely rocky because as humans, we do tend to need to get to the point where we are fed up before we show up. And 2024 to me feels like that, where my mother used to say, I have had enough. And when she said that, if she uttered those words, you booked your butt to whatever it was you didn't do that she asked you to do, or you just got clear of her yelling range. She had amazing lungs. So I have had enough is of feeling that I know is 2024. Now, I am going to encourage it to not be defeatist and to not be angry, actually, because if we just meet anger with anger, we're going to get more anger. We're going to get more frustration and we're going to get more, just more um, lives lost. And we're going to, we're not going to be able to hear each other or be able to communicate. And we have to actually get quiet and weed out the noise in order to know what's really important to each one of us individually. Do not underestimate this. The power of knowing yourself, of understanding what matters to you and attending to that and making sure that you're good and you're solid, if it must not be underestimated how much that can affect the whole. So if you're feeling I've had enough, I'm exhausted, I can't take this anymore. Please do not go to defeatist or I give up. Take your rest. Take your time and charge your own batteries first. And then you'll hear the theme uh, that's coming up. And then we'll take those charged batteries to the next step. So 2024 is about connectivity. I know I just said to take time to yourself. But there's no way to connect authentically and with full intention if you're not charged. If you don't feel like you've received your own acknowledgement, your own awareness, your own place in the world. It's, it's within all of us. We all want that. So this year, though, feels like connectivity. It feels like that desire to know your neighbor when maybe you don't because especially in the United States we get very insulated to our own homes and I don't like that <laughs> I don't want people over every night but I love knowing who's in my neighborhood how are you doing are you okay can I get you something when I'm out and about today but I understand the desire to and even a need sometimes to be safe in your own area. So this year, that energy is going to bubble up in some of us. And of course, this can't be a blanket statement. I am speaking to those of you who have been doing your work. 
I'm speaking to those of you who have been asking, what is my life to be? How am I going to contribute? What does it all mean to be here? Those are the people that I'm speaking to. So there's going to be a large part of the population that this is going to go right over their head. Well, they're not even going to watch the video and that's fine. But you may have these people in your life. The ones who are like, well, screw them. Let them deal with it. Or it doesn't matter. And, and they take the take care of yourself to a place of self-centeredness and of isolation and actually of paranoia and fear. So this year, the theme that was coming up when I was tapping in was connectivity, but with this distancing, which was as hard to hear as it is for me to say. So what that means is those of us who have been asking what matters to me, what kind of um, joy can I bring the world? I, what is this human thing all about anyway? are going to be drawn more and more together and in our own circles, be spending less and less time with and on those who want to stay stuck in their past, who want to continue to blame everybody and who don't want to grow, who don't want to evolve. So the connectivity happens by likely acknowledging your soul group and recognizing that, okay, we may have no bio connection, but I feel closer to you than I have felt um, with anyone that I'm supposedly related to. It's one of the reasons I did the Soul Group podcast, because I knew this theme was coming up and I wanted to kind of plant some ideas, give some help about the soul process being important, but also we're here in human form. We have to focus on that and pay attention. So when you're drawn to those who just get you or who feel easy to be with, there's likely to be some dropping off of those who you're just no longer interested in being exhausted around. Be kind about it. There's no reason to be a nudge or to please don't think you're better than them. Um, it's just where they are in evolution. And it's it's a bit like, do you want to only eat junk food or do you want to only watch trash TV? Um, you're putting that into your system. You're also putting the people that you're around into your system. And that might be a job that you need to leave. So this call that's coming from all of our souls to evolve happens every year. Every year. So there's always a pull and a draw and every day in every moment to expand beyond where you are. And sometimes you really think that sometimes that's where the exhaustion comes because it's like, listen, can I have a day off? Um, which of course you can take. Absolutely. And I highly recommend that you take lots of time off from self-growth because Honestly, when you're taking some time off, if you're participating in stuff that's fun and, uh, and, and engaging to you, you're also doing self-growth. So as you are releasing others, be kind about it. Maybe just make your space and not have any great conversations about it, but be practicing your boundaries and be willing to wish them love on their way. Okay, some of you will be called into activism and into connection and true activism where you care about the uh, subject or you care about the people, you care about the injustice and you want to help shift and, and change it. So not just an activism in name only, you know, sometimes people join a board of an, uh, an organization and they never show up or do anything. And then there are other board members who are there because they understand when you give, you get so much more in return than you're actually offering. So some of you are going to be drawn into that activist place and that can be behind the scenes. Does not mean that you need to put together a protest, a march, a fundraiser. That, oh, no. You can be behind the scenes. You can be 
stuffing envelopes. You could be, do we still stuff envelopes? <laughs> I just showed my age there. You know, you can be participating in ways that are not front center stage and still be very much an active part of growing. You can sit in meditation and send an intention from your heart to the oceans and in the cleanup effort and in the raising the vibration and the health of the ocean. Okay, we don't want to raise the temperature. We want to raise the vibration. That's another level of activism. Okay, you can do that, right? Thank you. This is going to create a connection. We've all been missing connection. And this goes way back before any pandemic or even our kind of isolated worlds of busy, busy, busy. This connection or lack of connection has been happening for decades and it's coming to a close. Actually, the last time we had one of these pretty big pushes of energy was 2001. So I remember that year because that was the year I was like, what's intuition? Going smack upside the head. Um, so in this connection, there's a beautiful, I feel like, I keep seeing, you know, the circles of a Venn diagram, how they overlap each other or the Olympic symbol. I keep seeing that where we don't have to necessarily get in somebody's circle, but we can overlap. We can see that we are all sentient beings. We are all humans. It doesn't matter where we live. It doesn't matter what circumstances that we've been brought up in. We all have a heart and we all have some level of caring for another being, the exception of sociopaths, but it's such a small number. Like, do we even have to talk about them anymore? They, there's these circles that I keep seeing, I feel like are indicative of the capability we have within ourselves to be connected to so many different areas that light us up. Like when I think of my world, I'm my common denominator, right? But I have friends who are vastly different from each other, yet it, when we get, they ha have gotten together before in a big collective, everybody gets along and, and, and we have a good time. I have people who I share, you know, my interest in fitness with, and then there's other people that I have these kind of deeper esoteric conversations with. And then we laugh like fools in the middle of that. And then there's a writing group that I belong to that I've never met anybody um, in person. It's all these overlapping areas that we have and in our own community in seeing, you know, the guy that drives the garbage truck every Wednesday, we have a, an appreciation moment where we're waving like fools to each other because I happen to walk the dog when he's doing his route. So things like that, where we're looking up, we're paying more attention, we're connecting with people, there's going to be a pull from within. And I hope you listen to it. And not because I want you to be in service somewhere. It's because I want you to feel why we're here. We're not all one. We're not all one being. But we are all contributing to the larger whole. And I don't know about you, but it's important to me to contribute to the best of my ability on most days. There's no such thing as perfection. And I don't want you to think that you have to be in service mode. But I do want you to listen to where that connection is for you. That may mean that you only people one day a month. Maybe you volunteer at a soup kitchen, stocking shelves, or a, a pantry or something, stocking shelves where it's not necessarily on the front. But you give something and you receive. I promise you the volunteering that you do will come back to you a thousandfold. And it will impact other areas of your life that you don't even realize it's going to until you're in them and you're like, huh, yeah, that seems to be. It, there will be... <laughs> oh, this next one, um, I both think that there's going to be some amusing uh, videos that come out around it, but also I hope people mind their manners. So that level of high I've had enough that I said earlier that Diane used to yell, there's a 
very large sound wave that I would call sick of BS. But it's not, and if you use the energy properly, it can be used to create strategy and to even bring grace to situations. So sick of the BS in old terms would mean like, put up your juice, right? Like fisticuffs or just shut up and you don't listen to each other. This energy feels like it's bringing and ushering in. Yeah, we're absolutely sick of the BS, the lying, the untruths, the people not showing up for their shifts if they're supposed to show up for their shift. Someone throwing crap on the ground because they think it's not their job to pick it up. That entitlement. Somebody actually said that not too long ago. And I'm like, <laughs> you want to get me mad? Litter right in front of me. Oh, and throw gum out because that chokes birds. Don't do it. Take care of it. And if you smoke, take care of your butts. They take 12 years to break down and the animals eat them and then they get sick. Don't be a butt. Pick up your butts. So this, there's an example of the BS. But creating strategy and grace and communication. There's this, it's actually got this cobalt blue. Well, that makes sense. It didn't dawn on me when I looked at it earlier, but blue is the uh, one of the colors in the throat chakra. So it's got this blue. Imagine if cobalt blue had sprinkles of turquoise running through it. That's what it looks like to me. So there's this wave of energy coming in that we can, you know, maybe before you have to have a conversation with someone in your family or in your workplace that feels like it could be contentious, contentious. Maybe you wrap yourself in that cobalt blue and with the turquoise coloring and you say, I can communicate directly. I can have this conversation. I don't have to put up with BS, but I want to do it respectfully with strategy and even grace. And that would be a way of you using the energy of 2024 that you've contributed to. I mean, we only get sick of the BS because we've been through BS, right? So you get tired of it. I don't want you to be sick and tired. I want you to be in a healthy place where you're using energy for its benefits. It's like, don't fight the ocean waves. Let it help you bring you into shore. Or, you know, if you're caught in that, that riptide, you just relax and let it shoot you out the other end. So these rings that are overlapping, I feel are encouraging. Like when I saw them, I took a really deep breath and I felt like, oh, finally, there's an opportunity for us to see each other as beings and not, not country lines or state lines or party lines or property lines, all these lines. Like, I understand there's a reason for them and I even respect them and I'm graceful. I love good structure. But when I was seeing these sim these circles, I felt like this encouragement to overlap and see where we could empathize with someone else. I've been doing this practice personally, you know, how like when you're scrolling through social media and stuff, and there's the people that every day they have a lot of drama and trauma and everything that they're working out on there. One of the things I've been doing is instead of just scrolling past, I've been feeling like, okay, is there truth in this? Not in their story. I'm not reading them. But is there something in this that I can learn to have another level of empathy around? Sometimes I'm like, oh, your shit. <laughs> and other times I'm like, okay, that it, you know, even as much as two months ago, I might have said, well, you're creating that. How about you shift out of your own victim story and you move along directly to them? But, you know, I have conversations in my head. I'm human, sometimes out loud, because I'm a human who spent a lot of time with herself. So that call for raising my vibration 
is my answer to the calls from universal energy asking us to raise vibration, right? I'm choosing to be cognitive about it. I'm choosing to bring a consciousness to it and not just leave it up to when I'm in meditation. The time to actually expand your vibration is when you're in the middle of a conversation or when you're uh, navigating life rather than only in those moments when it's pretty easy in meditation and otherwise. So in considering myself in these other people's situations and thinking about it from their perspective, I may not agree. I don't have to agree. They haven't hired me, nor am I their friend. So I don't have to get into this stuff, but it's a good way to practice observation, non-attachment with compassion. Okay. So that would be my challenge to you to consider that as a practice this year, because the energy is going to be there anyway. You <laughs> My feeling is, is we're all going to experience this at some point as humans. I want to use the energy of the universe to usher that. And it's like having somebody else get the sled started as you go down the hill. Why do all the work yourself? So we are always being called by ourselves, by our soul selves, to rate our frequency, to rate our awareness and our vibration. So it's going to get more difficult as universally we raise our frequency. It's going to get much more difficult for you to ignore that. So again, you know, I'm a pretty practical person. I like to just, what is it we need to do? Can we create a process around it? Does it feel right? Where are the potential pitfalls? And then, okay, what are the actions we're going to take? So if you see a game in this, a fun in this, that, oh, I'm always going to be raising my vibration anyway, I may as well see all situations that I'm in as a call to that action. So this is going to help those of you who are extremely wired. We're all sensitive people, so that whole highly, highly sensitive person thing, it, it feels like a platform kind of thing. Like, oh, you're highly sensitive. That means you're in, in some level, we've put it on a pedestal. I don't believe in that. We are all incredibly intuitive and able to use our skills if we pay attention to them. Those of you who are aware that you have said wiring and you've been ignoring it, here is your wake up call. Do <laughs> you need another one? <laughs> You're going to get bamboozled if you don't take a minimal action of, yep, I know I pick up on other people's energy. I know I have the insight. I know I, it wasn't a good idea to call that person, but I did it anyway. Those, those boomerang things are going to hurt way more. Because we don't have time for this in the evolution of humanity and uh, your soul and everything for you to continue to do what you've been doing for so long that hasn't gotten you anywhere. And trust me when I say I am including myself in this process. So those levels of mm, psychicness, intuitiveness that you have kind of gone, la, 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 yep, put over there, man, pay attention. So what that would look like is, ooh, I have a feeling I shouldn't do that. Ask questions. Well, why is that not a good idea? Do I need more information? That's a brilliant one to ask yourself if you're when you're developing your uh, knowing and your senses. Do I need more information here? Is this mine to be involved in? Is this my energy or is this someone else's energy? You better start asking these questions because if not, what ends up happening is it shows up as anxiety. It shows up as depression. It shows up as physical ailments. It shows up as not wanting to get out of bed. And it shows up as a lack of joy in your own life. You know, my specialty is helping people find their happy. Well, this is one of the ways we go about it is we start carving out and saying, okay, okay, oh wait, is that yours? Are we sure that's yours to deal with? It's not to isolate us. It's so that we know ourselves so damn well 
that when something is being put on us, we can say, that's really not mine. I'm going to leave it to you to carry your own stuff. If I can be of service, that's fine. I will not be in service. So start asking your questions and, and be willing to put the work in. Because this next year could be absolutely freaking phenomenal for the majority of us. Really. Like, this isn't pie in the sky. Vicky's an optimist kind of look. It looks good. It looks very good. But here's where it's not going to look good. If you don't show up in your own life, I do not want to be talking to you in December of 24 because this year became a shit show. I'm going to have to put in explicit on this episode. I get very passionate about this subject. So what can you do to prepare? Well, get grounded. Because the more grounded you are, the higher you can go in frequency. It is the beauty. And quite frankly, it's the, I don't know what to call it. Maybe it's the humor of being a non-physical being within a physical being. Okay, so the more grounded you are, the higher you can connect. And that means to guides, to angels, to ascended masters, to the big Kahuna, Gaia, to the muses, to uh, all of the ascended masters and all of that, right? Like to trees, to mountains, all of that. The more grounded you are, the more you can connect. Do not let somebody talk to you into doing two hours of meditation a day. It's how you raise your vibration half an hour then get grounded do the dishes go for a walk uh answer your emails i cleaned up my emails today is that a most amazing feeling to have it all caught up it's probably not now i haven't checked it in hours but it was there for a moment um get organized clean your closets get rid of crap answer like that pile of bills that you have there that you've been avoiding sit down and address it because the more you feel solid in your physical day-to-day life the more fun you can have with this intuitive wave that comes through and the more success and by that i mean joy financial relationship health a mental spiritual garden, cooking, whatever success means to you that you will experience. And the more you pay attention to your groundedness, to your physical health, the more you will feel engaged and the more energy you'll have to connect with others. I mean, that's one of the reasons that I went back to using Magic Mind as a reminder. I I feel like it helps. I know it's not that I feel like I know it helps me to be more consciously on Con- content creating is exhausting. Coming up, I give away a lot of free content and I always will because that makes my heart happy. And I know that's part of my soul's calling. So magic mind, my little shot, uh, helps me to connect all the dots and to stay on task and to follow through. Ooh, that one was missing for quite a while. I think it's the lion's mane in it, like intuitively when I tap in. I also love that lion's mane is known as the, the fluffy mushroom. <laughs> that just cracks me up. But it reduces inflammation. And that's not just inflammation in your brain. That's inflammation in your joints. It's inflammation in your skin and your system. I just love it. I just love it. So that's why I partnered up again with them. And you can go to magicmind.com forward slash instead of forward slash uh, Vicky Baird. Use the code Vicky20, V-I-C-K-I-20, and you'll get 20% off. If you do a subscription, you get 56% off. If you already have a subscription, you can still use the Vicky20 code and get 20% off your next go round. So head on over there. You know, they also give 100% money back guarantee. Um, Here's an aside you probably don't need to know. The bottles are amazing if you have to do a collection from your animals to take to the vet. (laughs) There were many trips that those little two ounce bottles made. So head on over magicmind.com or slash picky beard. 
but it really does help me. And these are the things that I've been doing, making sure my vitamin D is good, uh, making sure I'm getting out for a walk every day, even though I know the dog needs it, but I need it more. I need the grounding of my feet hitting the earth. I am making sure that I'm in bed by 1030 and lights out and I'm a sweet sleep uh, to recharge my batteries. And I'm also really diligent with my meditation in the morning. 15 minutes, that's my max. Beyond 15 minutes, some things it's 10. And I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm not going to force myself to sit there. But that, along with journaling, along with walking, along with my supplements, along with eating fairly well, is what helps keep me so grounded so that I can be in touch with all of these energies on a 18 7. I always tell them I'm not available when I'm sleeping. That's for my own soul to grow. So, there's a certain level of accountability that we are going to be asked to tap into. And just to be clear, this is not coming from some other source that's asking you to tap into it. This is coming from you. This is coming from your soul self, your higher self, your spirit self, your non-physical being, whatever you call it. It is coming from there. And the accountability is like, think of your favorite personal trainer who you absolutely adore, shout out Justin, but who's kind, but who's also going to be in your face. I'm talking to you, Josh, but they get so much and they believe in you so much and they pull you out of you. That's what's going on here. So listen, you got to do the work. You have to do the work. Stop blaming other people. Stop looking in that review mirror. If you've got trauma to heal, heal the trauma. If you're still blaming your parents and you have lived outside the house longer than you lived in your parents' homes, that's on you. And no, I'm not a therapist, but you know what? I'm a human who went through a lot of trauma, who knows this about herself and also works with people on a daily basis that I say kindly to. I'm not yelling at them, but kindly, like, when are you going to choose you? When are you going to choose to drop the struggle and step into the courage of being in your own life? This year, 2024, it's going to ask that of you and you get to decide if you're going to show up or if you're going to get road rash. Do your work, raise your vibration because then that raises the vibe of the whole universal force. When I finished the download of all of this, I asked for a one-liner for my guides. I said, can you give me a one-liner that I can say that will help me, but will mostly help anyone who's listening, watching, um, playing along, reading. Um, I know we have some people that read the transcript and so happy to do that. I, I said, can you give me a one-line that in this time of over-information, that we can refer to. And admittedly, I gave them the, huh? look, I mean, I got what they were saying, but you'll understand why. They said, pretend this is your one life and live it. And I love the directness of that, but I also love the humor because we live so many lives. But it's great advice because sometimes, I don't know about you, but if I know I have a day coming up where there's more flexibility, I actually tend to not get stuff done. I'll procrastinate that out. I'll drag that out because I have that day waiting for me, right? So I love this advice. I'm going to plaster it up in front of me on the wall that's behind my computer and say, you know, I am going to live this as if this is my one life. I know it's not new advice, but from guides that are, have already done all their lives, it just pickled me. Because one of the things that I also have seen, I'm seeing as part of our evolution, as part of our growing, is we are still going to experience people being here, and then they're not. And I don't mean 
space abduction or anything like that. But people being here in the physical than the croak. And I don't know if you ever thought of that or considered what that would be like. But one of my rules is when I leave someone conversation or otherwise, especially in person, I'm a hugger. I'm going to give you a hug because I want to know that our last moment together, that we had that connection, that we had that. If you're a hugger, I'm not going to step into your space if you don't like it. So act as if when you're seeing someone, don't get all dramatic about this, but just if it's the last time you're going to see them, like put some effort into connection, into feeling like you matter. So the other person matters. And then we just connect our matter. Right? So acting as if this is your one life and not I'll get to it later can also help you with those habits of scrolling, can help you with how much time you're going to spend you know, it, ruminating on stuff that you can't change anyway. So change the neural pathways to your brain, get some therapy, sign up for some coaching, um, do your work, read the books, go for the walks, extend the awareness within yourself. But treat each day as if it is your last. And there'll be more relaxation in your life. You'll go to sleep calm. You'll wake up calm because you know that you've given it your all. Now, I'm not asking you to be high energy. I'm asking you to have a high vibration. I'm not asking you to be on because, again, the more we can get calm, the more that we have those conversations with ourselves, the more we have the quiet, the higher we can raise our vibration. And the more that we can actually enjoy being human because this was not meant to be the torturous process it can seem like, okay? But we have a choice in that matter and we have to start being more active in our experience and no longer just going from day to day, okay? So assess the relationships with yourself. It's relationships. I bet there's multiple relationships there. I know I have certainly have a few personalities that show up. Um, but assess your relationships. Look at your time wasters. I guess that applies to relationships too. If there's if you if you're with somebody and you're like, why am I here? You need to address that. You don't have to do it in that moment. Take some time, think about it. Um, but fix it or move on. Truly, because that's also respecting the other person. If you're there and you don't want to be there, or if you're find yourself complaining about them and all of that, yeah, that's not okay. So get involved and evolve because you do matter. Your matter matters. You are energy and you matter. And our world greatly desires seeing you in your greatest frequency and most joy and fun and playfulness and success. And that happens by listening to your own brilliance, but also by acting on it. I wish that for you. Thank you very much. I will absolutely see you in 2024. And if you need any help creating this in 2024 at Coach Vicky Baird Coaching, uh, Vicky at VickyBaird.com. I'm pretty much available. You can comment on here and it's me answering back. If YouTube gives me the notifications, sometimes that's a little tricky, but I will. Uh, and I look forward to seeing what happens for you this year and also what happens for me. So take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of Intuition, Your Success Compass. I appreciate you being here. If you would like more information, about developing your intuitive skills, removing those blocks, and creating the life that feels the most successful to you, then head on over to VickiBaird.com. That's V-I-C-K-I-B-A-I-R-D.com. And check out the courses, the groups, and the Spaces app that will allow you to be part of our community and know about upcoming events and specials. 
Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next episode.